Welcome to this series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. This video's topic is 3D eye machining. So the 3D eye machining operation is the 3D version of the eye machining operation. We previously covered the 2D version in a previous video, so I'll refer you to that, as well as the basics of defining the machine and the material database have also been covered in a previous video. So let's take a look how the 3D version works. So once again, anytime you want to get to a solid cam operation, you can either go to the solid cam operations tab and then click on the categories up here. In this case, we're looking at 3D eye machining over here, or you can go to solid cam 3D and 3D eye machining is right there. But as always, you can always right click on the operations, go to add milling operation, and then at the top of the list, you'll see 3D eye machining. So 3D eye machining, as I mentioned, is a three-dimensional version of what we saw with the 2D. Uh, in this case, though, as a 3D toolpath, it has a lot more functionality in terms of the stock and target recognition. So much so that if I open up my first operation here, we'll see that the geometry is actually just the target. So in a previous uh, video where I covered the uh, how to get started inside a milling cam part, I mentioned that you don't necessarily have to add the stock and the target. For this toolpath, you should, uh, because as you see here, it uses the target as the default geometry. Now, of course, I, I could click on the new geometry button, and then I'd be selecting whatever solid I want to act as my geometry. Uh, but I would only do that in certain cases, some of which have been covered in previous tips and tricks videos on this YouTube channel. So you can always check those out. Um, but the default should be target, only because it'll allow you to keep this consistency throughout all the toolpaths. As long as you keep referencing the target, you're always referencing that same solid. Now, by referencing the target and the updated stock, what we're doing here is we're telling SolidCam to take whatever tool we've selected and apply it to that stock to become that target. So that's really why there's no geometry here. It's recognizing what the solid looks like and it's going to turn the, uh, the stock into that solid. Uh, by default, it'll actually do the entire stock. So this window right here for working area actually allows us to limit the travel of the tool. So rather than doing the entire part, I can tell it to maybe work only inside of, let's say, just this one area. I can say working area define. I'll click on working area, and then I'll just define what I'm looking for. In this case, I can use the same functionality we saw in the pocket operation toolpath. So to see how this window works, we're free to the pocket operation video. We can go to constant Z, grab that edge up there, and let's say I'm defining that chain there. What I'm actually doing here is telling the fully 3D toolpath to only work within that area. And I can tell it what kind of working area that is as well. There's actually four options in this window. External is what we have currently defined. If you look in the bottom left corner there, this icon is showing us what that represents. Essentially what it means is we're telling this full 3D toolpath to only machine what it finds inside of that chain, but allows it to uh, wander outside that chain, basically to reposition or uh, to, to, uh, to allow the tool to wander a little bit out to achieve things like, let's say, this corner over here. That tool would not be able to go in that corner because the radius of the tool is larger than the radius of my chain. But by saying external, I'm not allowing it to actually go outside there to fully machine out what it finds in that part. If I click on internal, then it only machines what it finds inside that chain and it only wanders and uh, repositions inside of that chain. So in the case of what I was talking about with this corner, it would leave some material behind in that corner because it can't actually travel too far within this chain because of that corner red. So it's a fully fenced off area, fully constrained area. To kind of use that same sort of functionality, but with a little bit of leeway, you have center. So in this case, the center of the tool can go right to that chain. So you would actually see the tool only go as far as the center of its tool to that chain there. And then even further, you can just say tangent. So as long as the tool stays tangent to that chain, then it stays within the boundaries. And of course, even if you did internal, you have the offset value here to actually allow it to go a little further outside that chain as well. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the working area without, uh, use this toolpath without the working area. So I'm gonna get it to do the entire part. In terms of tool selection, we covered the multi-tool option in the 2D eye machining operation video. So I won't review that here, but essentially what I'm doing here is allowing it to use three tools, a one inch tool, a half inch tool, and a quarter inch tool. And what that'll allow me to do is actually set parameters for each tool. So different levels, if I need them, different technology wizard uh, uh, parameters, 
like we saw again in the previous video with the 2D eye machining, and then in the technology uh, section as well. Now, technology is a little different between the 2D and the 3D, only because we're talking about 3D in this particular operation. So not only do we have a wall offset and a floor offset, we also have a scallop height. And the scallop height is essentially just the height of the steps we leave behind on any contour faces, curved faces, tapers, anything that is moving in 3D. Anything prismatic won't see a scallop. Anything else will see this, this scallop height. And my recommendation is usually to have this number the same as the wall and the floor offset, simply because this is a roughing toolpath. This is only a roughing toolpath. So what you want to do with this is after the selection of those three tools, by the end of this toolpath, you want your part to be fully roughed out, and you only want to see that much material on all faces. So basically, after all three tools, only leaving 10,000 scallops, 10,000 wall offset, 10,000 floor offset, there's only 10,000 on all faces, you should be able to go right into your finishing. Let's just jump back to the level section. So unlike other toolpaths inside SolidCam, whenever you're looking at a 3D toolpath, you usually get an upper level and a lower level, whereas in other toolpaths in the 2.5D series, you usually get a depth, a profile depth, a pocket depth, uh, anything referencing depth is a incremental value from whatever you set as your upper level. But when you see where it says lower level, that's actually calling out a Z level. So in this case, this is actually Z equals negative one, two, five. That's this lower face right here. And like we saw in the previous video, I'm selecting this face to get it to be associative, indicated by the color, and then I'm just gonna go an incremental amount of 30,000 below there. But what I'm actually doing whenever I say upper level and lower level is I'm giving it those Z levels. I'm giving it a, a work envelope in the Z direction to analyze the solid. So I'm still looking at the target and I'm looking at the target between those Z levels. So I'm actually only getting it to machine that much. So the fact that I've chosen the lower face, but I'm actually still taking the tool from this direction, uh, it's not going to crash. It's actually looking at the target for me. So this has its own auto detection, even though I don't have anything here that says crash detection, other than if I had to find a fixture, I could do fixture detection to get there. But by default, a 3D recognition toolpath is automatically looking at the target and the stock. That's why I don't have to check any box here to get it to do that. Let's go back to the tool section. So I have three different tools. Let's see how those three different tools applied themselves to the part. So with the one inch tool, looking at the entire stock, the entire target, it did the outside and the inside. And you can see it recognized that there was a center pocket. It recognized those pockets there, recognized the flats, as well as the outside perimeter. So unlike what we saw with the 2D eye machining, I'm not actually telling it what geometry to machine. I'm actually just telling it to take a look at the stock and target and take this tool and do whatever it can do. So from the updated stock, this being the first toolpath, it did pretty much everything. So the part actually ends up looking like this. So you can see that it machined out the majority of that cavity. It machined out that, that outside perimeter to about 30,000 below the lower face. And it did as much of that center pocket as it could. Take a look at the half-inch tool. So by default, it's working off the updated stock, which means that this is going to be a rest operation. So looking at it from the point of view of a half-inch tool, it saw that it needs to go and clean up some of those corners, maybe some of those walls, and it did a little more of the inside pocket. And then further, we got that quarter-inch tool. It went even further and did more of the corners, more of the side walls as well. So this one tool path, but the ability to add all three tools gives you the ability to basically just say, these are the tools I would like to use. This is my stock, this is my target. With the optimization from the iMachining database selecting, the CAM part file for a VMID in aluminum. Uh, this is the type of toolpath where you can just tell it the stock, the target, the tools, and generate. And then right from here, the part should be fully roughed out. If we take a look at it in our simulation, I'm just gonna go to simulation. Simulation modes will have been covered in the pocket operation uh, video, so I would refer you to those for the different operations. I'm just going to go right to Solid Verify, and I'll play this guy through. So there is our one-inch tool, We're shooting out as much as it can. And then we'll switch to the half-inch tool, and we'll see that it works around the corners. And then we'll go to the quarter-inch tool, and we'll see that it continues to clean up the rest of the material.
Now you'll notice that it look at it's even though it's 3D, it's looking at the part in Z level. So it actually is almost generating a kind of 2D operation, 2D eye machining operation per level. And that is really, again, we're doing 3D eye machining, but this is still eye machining. So it's looking at that material engagement, it's taking that material information, that machine information, optimizing the feeds and speeds. Everything that we covered in the 2D eye uh, machining operation video pretty much covers here. It's just doing it in 3D. So it's actually slicing this up in the Z level. And when you do the calculation of the 3D eye machining, you'll actually see that it calls out the Z level that it's on. So this is actually doing a, 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 a 3D version of 2D eye machining where it just kind of slices it up into 2D eye machining operations. So there we go. So from the, uh, the solid verify, we can see that it roughed out everything in one tool path. And right from here, I could go and add my finishing operations. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.